Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I want to give you some recommendations on drawing apps that are designed for Windows tablets, more specifically drawing apps that have user interface designed for use with fingers and gestures. The five drawing apps featured in this video are Concepts, Sketchable Plus, Adobe Fresco, Sketchbook Pro, and Leonardo. And if you know of other drawing apps that work well with Windows tablets, let me know in the comment section below. These five apps can be used without a keyboard, but they do support keyboard shortcuts, so if you want to use a keyboard, you can do so. Alright, let's start with the first app, which is Concepts, which is one of my favorite drawing apps, not just on Windows, but also on Android and iPad. So Concepts is actually a drawing and sketching app that uses vector which means all the lines that you see are actually based on mathematical formulas. So you can actually zoom all the way in and the lines will still be very sharp. And this particular app actually features an infinite canvas, so there is no canvas size. So you can actually draw on and on and you will not run out of space. This is the tool wheel which can be configured into a toolbar and there are eight shortcuts here. So you can actually set up eight similar brushes, each with a different color or each with a different brush size and switch between them very easily. To change the brush size, you just have to tap here and drag. To change opacity, just tap here and drag. And this is to change how straight the line is. To call up the color palette, just tap here in the center. This color wheel is based on the Copic coloring system and for some reason it's very easy to achieve color harmony using this color palette even if you don't have any knowledge on using color wheels or color schemes. This app does not have many drawing tools or brushes compared to other drawing and painting apps and that is its pro and its con. So one downside to this app is there is no fill bucket tool. So to fill color into this shape, you actually have to draw out the shape. And if you want to make sure the colors are inside the lines, you have to draw more carefully and draw within the lines. So this is actually one big limitation for concepts. Additional brushes can be purchased from within the app and I actually have another video talking about all these brushes which I will link to in the video description below. Concepts is based on the freemium model which is to say it's free to use however certain tools and features are actually locked behind a paywall so you can pay a one-time purchase to unlock some of the tools or pay for the subscription which will unlock all the tools. Personally for me, I pay the one-time purchase and buy some of the brushes because it's more economical to pay a one-time purchase. This app allows you to configure certain finger gestures. The basic two-finger undo is supported. I have configured three fingers to show the color palette and four fingers to show the layers palette. And I have configured this single finger for moving the canvas around. Concepts has this interesting feature where a layer will be created for each tool you use. For example, I use the watercolor brush to create the line art and the fill tool to create the colors. So when I switch to the watercolor brush, the layer will automatically switch to watercolor. And when I switch to using the fill tool for coloring, the layer will automatically switch to the fill layer. This workflow can be quite confusing to beginners but you also have the option of the more traditional workflow where you choose the tool and you choose the layer to draw on and you draw. So the last thing that I like about concepts is the user interface element as you can see is very minimal. I can hide the layer and the tool will only takes up this small area and you have this big area for drawing. And this app has perfect palm rejection so you can rest your palm on the display and draw. So this is a really nice app to draw with and I highly recommend you go download this app to try because it's based on a freemium model. You can try for free and if you like it, you can pay for the one-time purchase to unlock some of the tools such as unlimited layers. The next app I want to feature is Sketchable Plus, which used to be called Sketchable. And this is a one-time purchase of US $19.90. So this is a drawing 
app which is also quite simple to use we have the layers palette on the side here there is the fill bucket too and if you double tap two times you can call up the settings so i can use this to fill the color here to adjust the brush settings you can tap once and pull out this palette and this palette will update whenever you switch to a different tool and it is possible to change the different attributes of the brush and you can also create your own brush i'm actually not very familiar with this app so i can't tell you the actual pros and cons except to say that this app is very simple to use the one thing i don't quite like about this app is it doesn't support finger gestures for undo so you have to press the undo button here to undo so the only gestures that are supported are the navigation gestures for zoom pan and rotate Next, let's look at Adobe Fresco, which is a pretty cool app designed with minimal user interface for Windows tablets. And this app is based on the subscription model, which is to say that if you stop paying for the subscription, you will lose access to the app and you will not be able to open your files that were created with this app. And that's a huge downside for me. So let's create a new file. The toolbar is on the left side and the three main types of brushes available are the pixel brushes, the watercolor live brushes, and the vector brushes. And of course there are other tools like eraser, smudge, transform, move, selection. The one thing I really like about this app is the watercolor live brushes. So notice as I paint the color sort of spreads out or the paint sort of spreads out and when i paint over the color i can make the color more intense kind of like watercolor where you get the transparency and if i switch to a different color like red or maybe blue and put the blue onto the yellow you can see the color would actually just spread out just like watercolor just like wet on wet watercolor effects the downside here is obviously this is still going to look kind of digital unless you maybe add the paper, the watercolor paper texture behind. But um, this is really fun to play with. So if you want to adjust the brush size, the opacity or how straight the line is, again, you can just tap and drag on these sliders here. Brush customization is quite limited compared to other drawing and painting apps. The finger gesture shortcuts that are supported by this app are two finger undo, three finger redo, and you can tap and hold for the eyedropper. This app is user friendly and the watercolor live brushes are really fun to use. But the major downside really is this is a subscription app. So if you really like the watercolor brush effect another app that you can check out is Rebella which is actually a desktop app so it's not going to be that intuitive to use with fingers but it's a one-time purchase and now we'll look at sketchbook pro which is the app i will recommend if you are into drawing and painting and that is because this app has so many different types of brushes and you can get a lot of customization with all these brushes there are many versions of sketchbook and sketchbook pro over the years and this particular version has the toolbar at the top there is this layer button which you can hide or show that you can move around you can also move this toolbar here around there are two pucks here that you can use to adjust brush size opacity and select colors and there are additional tools here on the bottom left side this app probably has all the basic tools that you will probably need for drawing so to change the opacity you can drag up and down to change the brush size you can drag left or right and this app has perfect palm rejection actually all the drawing apps have perfect palm rejection the one thing i don't quite like about this app is it doesn't support finger gestures for undo so you will have to use the undo 
shortcut button here or here. Layer management is pretty straightforward and easy to understand. There are many useful tools up here and when you tap on the tool, additional tools will appear. There is the selection tool, crop tool, quick transform, transform, field bucket, text, the guides, perspective guides, mirror, and a lot more. One thing I like about this app is the minimal user interface but you also have the option to add more palettes on the screen if you want to. And you have the option to move the palettes around to anywhere you like. And I like that. So obviously this app will benefit Windows tablets that have a larger display so that you can put more palettes on the screen. But if you are using a small display, um, you can just remove all these palettes. So the downside or limitation with this app is the lack of support for finger gestures for two finger or three finger undo, redo. And this app actually supports many keyboard shortcuts. So this app is best used together with a keyboard, but it is possible to draw with this app without a keyboard as well. The last app I want to feature is Leonardo and I'm quite hesitant to feature this app because this app has been in beta for a very long time. But it's a good drawing app. You can download the trial to try and if you like the app enough, you can buy it for US $39, which is more expensive compared to Sketchbook Pro, which actually has more tools and features. So as you can see, the user interface design is very minimalist and the buttons are big for use with your finger. So let me just create a few layers. Now this app is very user friendly. One thing I don't quite like about this app is there is no layer preview unless you mouse over the layer. So you really have to rely on naming the layer to select the layer that you want. The drawing tools available are the brush tool obviously, eraser, smudge, paint bucket, we have the eyedropper and these are the different brushes available and the selection is quite limited and even if you want to customize the brush settings, again the customization is quite limited. In terms of value for money, I will probably have to recommend you go with Sketchbook Pro. Let me just reduce the size of this eraser because Sketchbook Pro will give you more tools and features at a lower price point. But if you want to support an independent developer, um, yeah, uh, maybe you can check out Leonardo. Go download the trial and test it for yourself. Out of these five apps that I have featured, I highly recommend you get Concepts and Sketchbook Pro. Concepts is really fun to use and the workflow is very different compared to other drawing and painting apps. And because the workflow is different, it can help you think differently. So this is just a one-time purchase. It's really worth the money. And Sketchbook Pro, I think it's a must buy because it offers so many tools, so many features at an affordable price point. And this app, Sketchbook Pro, has more features and tools compared to Sketchbook Plus and Leonardo, which um, do the same thing. So definitely go with Sketchbook Pro. Adobe Fresco is fun to use, but it's a subscription app, so um, that is a huge downside. As you have seen, many of these drawing apps that are designed for Windows tablets actually have very limited support for finger gesture shortcuts beyond the usual navigation shortcuts like zoom, pan and rotate. So that's just the way it is at the time of making this video. Before you go, I just want to let you know that there is this app called Tablet Pro Studio which you can buy from the Microsoft App Store and you can add additional shortcut buttons on the side here. For drawing apps that have many commands or shortcuts that are hidden within the menu system, you can actually create shortcuts for all this on this panel on the side and just tap on the shortcut instead of going into the menu to find a tool or shortcut or command and tap on that. So this is actually quite convenient. When you switch between different apps, the shortcuts on this panel will update to show you the shortcuts for that drawing app which is active. 
So right now I am using Medibank Paint Pro and I can see the shortcuts are for Medibank Paint Pro. But as you can see, the switch is not instant. That's because this app is still under development and there are still some glitches to fix. I will make a full review for Tablet Pro Studio in the future when the app is more complete and the developer is actively developing this app. I cannot remember whether there is any trial version for this app, but if there is, you can go to Microsoft Online Store to download the app to try. Alright, I hope this video is useful. See you guys in the next one. Bye!